حکیم ومن يكسب خطيئة أو اسما ثم يرمي به بريئا ومن ثم يرمي به بريئا فقد احتمل بهتانا واسما مبينا صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم انس وحشتنا في قبورنا وارحمنا بالقران العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته انا الليل وانا النهار وجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين آمين. Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you must have noted, we are starting our study today from ayah number 111 of Surah An-Nisa. Just to have a brief review, I told you that these ayat can be grouped regarding different addresses in surah an-nisa in some passages the address is directed towards the muslims positively giving them the details of sharia giving them how to reform the society now now that it is your own society you have your own society at madina you have the political authority here now you can enforce your own laws now you can reform this society in your own methods in your own ways secondly the address to the people of the book the jews and the christians thirdly the address towards the munafiqeen the most important element now at madina was that of munafiqeen because it was the hidden enemy of the muslims and they had become a menace to the muslim society and this you know budding islamic state we may call it although there is no address to them directly by the words ya ayyuhal munafiqun you will never find this word in the quran always they are also addressed ya ayyuhal ladina amanu why because they profess to be muslims legally they were muslims so they are also addressed by the words ya ayyuhal ladina amanu but when we see to the contents of the ayah then we can understand here actually the address is to the munafiqeen but then secondly these three addresses they are interspersed with each other to review the first 43 ayat they were positive instructions to the muslims how to reform the society what is the law of inheritance how to protect the rights of women how to protect the rights of orphans etc etc how to have a sex discipline in your society how to finish with the sex anarchy all these things came in the ayat in the beginning 43 ayat then there was a brief reference to the people of the book from ayah number 44 to ayah number 57 then two very profound ayat again positively towards the muslims given the basis of the islamic state how to conduct the affairs of the islamic state 
يا ايها الذين امنوا اطيعوا الله واطيعوا الرسول واولي الامر منكم فان تنازعتم في شيء فردوه الى الله والرسول ان كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الاخر ذلك خير واحسن تاويلا and after that starts a very long discourse starting from ayah number 60 and it will end up in the ayah number 115 it's a continuous address to munafiqeen and three subjects are discussed regarding them number 1 total obedience to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is essential if you profess to be muslims you have to obey him in all respects even all personal disputes that may arise between you you have to accept him as the arbiter you have to accept him as the judge fala wa rabbika la yu'minun hatta yuhakkimuka fi ma shajara bainahum thumma la yajidu fi anfusihim harajan mimma qadayt wa yusallimu taslima but this is what this was very you know very difficult for them to swallow a very bitter pill to swallow for the munafiqeen he is also a man human being why should we be obedient to him we are ready to obey allah but why should we be obedient to him you know the same disease which today we have among the people who don't want to accept ahadith who don't want to accept sunnah as the permanent source of islamic law they say way for quran is sufficient for us we don't need anything else the same disease is appearing among the muslims in this form that was the attitude of the munafiqeen or, or madina we are not ready to obey, obey muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are ready to obey allah allah's word secondly qital fi sabilillah had become a very big burden for them risking their lives going out to fight the enemies of allah risking their lives spending their money and wealth and belongings so we had a long discourse about that thirdly and it was this concerned basically the munafiqeen not of madina but munafiqeen at bakka munafiqeen in other tribes for them hijra had been made obligatory it was fard you have to migrate to madina now and i told you the wisdom behind it that now because an offensive had to be taken against the aimmat al kufr the leaders of kufr they were in makkah the quraish and you know for that offensive all the human resources that were available should have gathered at one place at the base so that an effective offensive could be launched from there when muslims were scattered some are here some are there some are in that uh, tribe some are living in that tribe in that corner of arabian peninsula so how could you know that force be available which was required for an effective offensive so hijra was made compulsory obligatory and it has also become a reason for munafiqeen you know because they were hesitating to leave their hearts and homes and families and the places where they were born where they were brought up where their ancestors you know they were they lay buried so actually it was very hard to do it so these three things have been discussed you know in detail is in this passage now we are in the middle of that wa man yaksib isman fa inna ma yaksibuhu ala nafsi it's again a universal law whosoever earns a sin verily he earns it against himself you know this iman bil akhira this faith in hereafter it changes the outlook of human beings absolutely i have done something wrong to him well actually i have done something wrong to myself because i will have to bear the punishment for that in the hereafter which is the real life wa inna dar al akhirat la hiya al hayawan law kanu ya'lamun so the outlook is absolutely changed you have not done anything wrong to him you have done something wrong to your own self your own soul you have doomed your own self wa man yaksib isman fa inna ma yaksibuhu ala nafsi wa kana allah aliman hakima and allah is ever knowing all wise wa man yaksib khatiyatan and there is the second grade you know a higher level of this sin and what is that wa man yaksib khatiyatan aw isman whosoever earns a sin or some other wrong deed summa yarme bihi bariyan 
and then he casts the blame on somebody else who is innocent. I do something and put the blame on him. He has done it. Now this is a crime of a higher degree. فَقَدِحْ تَمَلَا بُحْتَانًا وَإِسْمًا عَظِيمًا بِسْمًا مُبِينًا But such a person has taken upon himself the burden, a very heavy burden of false charge, false allegation and a very clear and manifest sin. So these are two ayat, you know, and they have, they have something common between them in, in the subject. And there is an incident in the background. A munafiq who was a Muslim, he committed a theft. Then he put the blame on a Jew. They knew because, you know, these Jews are weak, we are strong, our tribes are strong, Aus and Khadraj. And you know, because Aus and Khadraj are mainly Muslims, so I will get the support of the Muslim society and I will go scot-free and this Jew will be blamed for this theft. But when it was investigated, he was found to be guilty himself. But now his relatives came and they took his side. No, 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 he is, he is our brother, he is a Muslim, he must not be punished. So it become, became a hard issue for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, these things are practical examples, you know. To run the affairs of a state is not an easy job. You have to look to the right, to the left. But you know, because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the prophet of Allah, so he decided rightly. And he gave the punishment to the Muslim, although he was a legal Muslim. So that is the incident. Man yaksib isman fa'innama yaksibuhu ala nafsi. First of all, he committed theft. And he took the burden of his sin on him. And to add fuel to fire, وَمَنْ يَكْسِبْ خَطِيَّةً أَوْ إِسْمًا سُمَّ يَرْمِ بِهِ بَرِيًا فَقَدْ اِحْتَبَ لَبُهْتَانًا وَإِسْمًا مُبِينًا وَلَوْ لَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ وَرَحْمَتُهُ And O oh, Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, had there not been the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bounty upon you, لَحَمَّتْ طَعِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ A group amongst these had tried and intended an yudiluk to lead you astray, to lead you on the wrong path, to lead you to the injustice. وَمَا يُضِلُّونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ But because Allah is with you, they can't take you to the right, to the wrong path. But they are, actually they have taken themselves to the wrong path. They have taken the ism and the, they have taken the burden on themselves. وَمَا يَضِلُّونَ مِنْ شَيْءٍ and they will ne never be able to harm you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is your protector. وَانزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ And this is one of the manifestations of Allah's bounty on you. That أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down the book and the wisdom on you. وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you what you, what you didn't know before. وَكَانَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا And you know the bounty of Allah on you is very great. صلى الله عليه وسلم لا خير في كثير من نجواهم There is no good in most of their secret parleys and secret talks. نجوا Two, three persons going away and talking to each other. This is called نجوا you should say out whatever you have to say in the, in the open. But you know groupings, then intrigues, then sitting in different corners, and then you know they are talking to each other. This is called najwa. La khaira fi kasirim in najwa. In these secret meetings and secret negotiations and secret, you know, parleys and secret talks, most of them they are without any good. Illa, but there is an exception. إِلَّا مَنْ أَمَرَ بِصَدَقَةٍ Except for, for the, that person who, who commands someone to give something in charity. Now to ask in public is not good. If you persuade in private, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you wealth. You should, you know, spare something for the cause of Allah, for the cause of the poor. So if you are doing this job privately and separately, then it is good. One exception. إِلَّا مَنْ أَمَرَ بِصَدَقَةٍ أَوْ مَعْرُوفٍ Or any other good advice is being given. Personal advice. 
if you advise a person in public, maybe he feels offended. He thinks himself to be superior to me, so he is advising me. But if you privately go and tell him that this is better for you, and this attitude that you have taken is not good, it would have been much better had you taken that attitude. So that is also an exception. How is lahim benandas? And the third is, when you are trying to bring some reconciliation between two parties, there also you are required to talk to them separately, then come to the other party and talk to them separately. So these are the three exceptions. All other secret negotiations are without any good. La khaira fi kasirim min najwahum illa man amara bi sadaqatin aw marufin aw islahim bainan nas. Wa man yafal zalika. Whosoever does these three things or one of these three things, ibtigha mardat illah. And in doing these things, actually he wants the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah be pleased with me. To such a person or to such persons, we shall give a very big reward. Now this is the last ayah of this passage. We started from ayah number 60, in which you know actually, indirectly, the munafiqeen are being addressed. These all, you know, diseases which have been considered and discussed here, they were in the munafiqeen. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ Whosoever becomes hostile towards the messenger of Allah. That was the last stage, you know, because just as you know, TB, tuberculosis had three stages. First stage, second stage, third stage. And when, you know, somebody had gone to the third stage of tuberculosis, you know, then it was thought now it is incurable. The same way, you know, nifaq, first stage is telling lies, making lame excuses. Second stage is, now you are swearing by Allah. Wallah, I wanted to go. Actually, there was this reason I couldn't go to the, to the battle. And third is, you feel enmity for the Muslims, and especially for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had put us in this difficult position. Because he has started this movement. And by this movement, now there is a conflict in Arabia. Now there is wars are going. And we are required to go to fight. And this is actually all due to him. So there was personal enmity towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hearts of the munafiqeen. And enmity towards the Muslims, good Muslims. Why? Well, they are always ready to go. Whenever there is a call, they respond positively. They don't look to the right or the, right, the left. They don't see what are the risks involved. And they are ready to sacrifice everything. So actually... Because they respond positively to every call, we become prominent because we are not responding positively. So actually they are to blame. So these are the two reasons of shikaq. And this is the highest level of nifaq. And when nifaq reaches this level, it becomes incurable. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى Whosoever becomes hostile to the messenger of Allah, after the guidance has been made manifest and evident. Now it was, you know, at least 17 years had passed from the beginning of Wahi. Most of the Quran had been revealed. All the guidance has, has come to you already. When all this guidance has come to you, and even now if you are hostile to the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and whosoever is following, not the way of the Muslims. The way of the Muslim is, when they are called, they say labbaik. When they are called to spend, they bring everything they have and contribute. This is the way of the Muslims. So actually, whosoever is hostile to Muhammad وسلم, and who is, whosoever is not following the way of the Mu'mineen, we also turn him, turn him in the direction in which, which he has himself chosen. He has chosen the direction of hell. Well, hell to you. Go. Now we don't care for him. Now we don't want to bring him back. Now he has taken this direction. He has reached that level of nifaq. Let him go to hell. And we shall throw him in Jahannam. Wasat Masira and it's a very bad destination. 
So this is the final, you know, in this long passage starting from ayah number 60 and it has come to ayah number 115. It has been discussing all, all this passage discusses actually nifaq and munafiqeen and the various diseases in them and the various forms of manifestation of nifaq. But this ayah is important in another way also. And that is, you know, it is the basis of the authenticity of ijma in Islam. You know, the sources of Islamic law are number one, Quran. Sources of Sharia, Quran, number one. Sunnah of the Prophet, number two. And ijma, number three. Ijma of the days of the Prophet, ijma of the days of the companions, ijma of the, the period of Khilafat al Rahimah. Now, this has been accepted by all four schools of fiqh among the Sunnis, Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi, Hanbali. They all accept the Jumaah is the third source of law in Islamic Sharia. But Imam Shafi says, I wondered if Ijma'ah is so important, why there is no mention of it in Quran? And Imam Shafi is a big scholar. And he is actually the founder of that discipline of Usul al-Fiqh. This discipline started with Imam Shafi rahimahullah. So he says that I read, I went through Quran 300 times only to find any place to which I can point out that this is the basis of Ijma. 300 times I didn't find anything. But now on the 301st chance, my eyes, you know, stopped here. Here is the place of Ijma. Sabilul Mu'minin, the way of the moments, the way of the believers, it becomes authentic by itself. And this is Ijma. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ now, again to the Muslims. But this can again be divided into two parts. A, and that is regarding shirk and the pageant background. After all, all the Muslims, you know, in that society, they belong to and their ancestors were the worshippers of idols, etc., etc. So maybe there is some some of those past influences and traditions present in some of them, if not all of them, in some of them there can be some traces, some, you know, some effect of that background. So here also we find in a very brief passage, it appears to be as if we are reading some Makki ayat, this, this portion. Inna Allah la yaghfiru wa yasha. First of all, and this ayah, these words are appearing for the second time now in this very surah. Allah Ta'ala is never going to pardon and forgive this sin of shirk that something or somebody be associated with him as a partner or as equal. This is the biggest sin, biggest crime, unpardonable. In Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma duna zalika li man yasha. Whatever is lesser and smaller than this, it can be hoped that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will condone it. But it is not an open license that you go on doing everything else except shirk. And it is licensed to you and it is ensured for you that Allah will forgive it. No, but, but it can be hoped. Not for all. For whomsoever he wills, he pleases. And verily, who commits shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, associates anything or anybody with him as partner or equal, well, he has gone astray and he has gone very far off, deviated very far off from the right path. Now that was the shirk of the pageant Arabs. They, you know, had female deities, their goddesses, Lat, Female, Muannas, Uzza. Uzza is the feminine of Al Aziz. Al Uzza, Al Aziz. Al Akbar, Al Kubra. In the same way, Al Aziz, Al Uzza. 
لات منات عزا دیز ور دی فیمیل ڈیٹیز ان یدونا من دون ہی اللہ ہی نہ تھا دے آر نوٹ پرینگ ٹو اور ورشپنگ بسائیڈز اللہ بٹ فیمیل ڈیٹیز دے آر گوڈیسز وہی یدونا اللہ شیطان مریدہ This is only apparently that they are calling and praying, you know, and invoking Lat or Manat or Uzza. Actually, they are calling and praying to Shaitan. The Shaitan who is the rebel against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually, it is Shaitan who is being addressed. Lanahu Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had cursed him. وَقَالَ لَا تَخِذَنَّ مِنْ عِبَادِكَ نَصِيبًا مَفْرُوضًا And he also had, had said it in a challenging mood. Oh Allah. I shall prove to you and I shall take a share from your, these creatures, your men, these human beings, Nasiba Mafruza, a part, a portion which is appointed and, and absolutely clear. I will get them. I will lead them astray. I will engage them in vain hopes, in wishful thinking. Oh, Allah is bountiful. He will forgive. So you follow Lana. We will be pardoned. Lantana sallana naru illa yama madudat. The fire of hell will not be able to touch us. Except for only a few days. These are the amani. La udillannahum wa la umanniyannahum. Wa la aburannahum fa la yubattikunna azan al-anhaab. And I shall command them. And they will slit the cattle's ears. Why? Because when some, you know, cow or something else, some, some camel that was fixed, that was given to some, some idol in the name of idol set free, they due to slit their ears as a sign that this is now a sacred thing. Nobody touch, to touch to them. Just we find in Hindu society also, even today, we find that the cattle are, you know, roaming. Nobody can stop them because they have been donated to in the name of some, you know, devta and some god, etc., etc. وَلَعَمُرَنَّهُمْ فَلَا يُغَيِّرُنَّ خَلْقَ اللَّهِ And which, and I shall command them, and they will alter the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now we are playing with this creation of Allah, with genetics and genetical engineering. We will be playing havoc with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This has started. And the other form was females imitating males. Males imitating females. Allah has made them something else. Allah had made these hair grow on males. We shave it. No, we, we, we want to look like females. This is also a change in the khalq of Allah. This is nature going against nature. Why? The sunnah of the prophets, all the prophets, all the messengers of Allah, and we are imitating this West. Why? This is again, you know, changing. Because the fitra, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. All these things, you know, fitra is that which was given to us through Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. So this is changing. And unisex dress. Somebody is going and you can't say whether he is a male or she is a female. You can't know. So all these things, you know, they, they belong to this category. And this is going to its climax through this genetical engineering. And whosoever takes Satan as his protector and friend instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh, he is in a great loss, in a manifest loss. He has lost his career, his future. Ya'iduhum. This Satan promises them, although his promises are false, by human name, <coughs> and engages them in vain hopes, in wishful thinking. But whatever the Satan, the Satan is promising to them is nothing but delusion and deception. For all these, the abode is hell. And they will not find any way out of it. Once thrown in it, they will have no escape, no way out of it. And on the contrast, as I told you, wherever there is mention of the people of the hell, 
then now people who are going to paradise walladhina amanu wa amilu salihat as for those who have real belief real iman wa amilu salihat and what's the proof of their real belief that is the amalus salih their deeds are good sanudkhiluhum jannatin tajri min tahtil anhar soon we are going to make them enter the gardens underneath which rivers will be flowing khalidina fiha abada and they will abide there they will live there forever forever wadallahi haqqan a true promise from allah subhanahu wa taala don't have don't harbor any doubts in your mind it's a promise from allah and you know it's a true promise wa man asdaqu bin allahi qila who can be more true in his saying than allah subhanahu wa taala himself so have full confidence that if you are fulfilling these two conditions of iman and amal salih then allah subhanahu wa taala will fulfill his promise and he is asdaqu qila laysa bi amaniyakum now this word again appears here amani what is amani wishful thinking well we belong to the umma of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we shall have the intercession we shall all be saved we shall go directly to heaven directly to paradise when well, where has it been guaranteed in the quran could you tell me please but this is amani lan tamassana nar illa ayam madudat where in torah have we given you that guarantee could you tell us no is your amani your wishful thinking nanu abna ullah wa hibahu we are like sons to allah we are very loved by allah subhanahu wa taala we are beloved of allah has he said it so in any of his books no is amani laysa bi amani yakum o muslims beware nothing will be decided according to your wishful thinking wala amani ahl al kitab nor the amani of ahl al kitab these amanis these umniyats these wishful thinkings these false beliefs that you have concocted yourselves may yamal su an yujza bi whosoever commits something wrong something bad something ill and evil he will be recompensed for that this is the law there is no exception to this law wala yajid lahu min dunillah waliyan wala nasira and he will never find against the judgment of allah against the accountability of allah anybody to protect and anybody to help no protection no help if you have done wrong you will have to face it may yamal suwan yujza bi wala yajid lahu min dunillah waliyan wala nasira and again here contrast as for the muslim wa may yamal min as-salihat whosoever is doing good deeds virtuous acts min zakarin aw unsa irrespective of whether he is a male or she is a female wa huwa mu'min but the condition is that she or he must be a mu'min good deeds there can be in the unbelievers also they they can also found charitable institutions they might, they might be doing something good for the humanity but if they don't believe in allah if they don't believe in muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if they don't believe in the hereafter when that good deeds and charities are going to be no good to them in the hereafter so that is the condition but whether he is a male or she is a female it is it is irrelevant wa man yamal bin salihat min zakarin aw unsa wa huwa mu'minun fa ulaika yadkhulun al jannah these people will enter paradise heaven la yuzlamun naqira and they will not be wronged even equal to the speck of a dead stone وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِيمًا مِمَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ and who can be better in religion than the one who submits his face to Allah and because this face is the most respectable part of our body what does it mean he has submitted his whole self before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala face actually is the most important part of human body وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ Now here most of the translators I find 
they have committed a mistake. Mohsin here is not men doing good to others. This is the higher level of Islam. Islam, Iman, Ihsan. Very fine level of Islam. Subtle level. High level. Where it is becomes Ihsan. As we find in Hadith Jibreel. Which is called Umm Sunnah. First question, what is Islam? Number two, what is Iman? Number three, what is the Ihsan? Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. When you know his religion becomes very fine, very beautiful. His character is very admirable. When he's praying from the depths of his heart. When he's loving Allah the most from the depths of his heart. And what is the Ihsan? And the Prophet replied, Anta Allah ka tarahu fa'illam takun tarahu fa'innahu yaraq. That you obey Allah, you worship Allah as if you are seeing him. Or at least if you are not seeing him, at least you should have the feeling that he is seeing you. This is Ihsan. And he follows the Milla, the method and the way of Ibrahim. And Ibrahim was... An upright person, absolutely pure in faith, harif, yaksu, upright, and pure faith. But Tahad Allah Ibrahim Khalila. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taken Ibrahim as a friend. Now, this is the highest degree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking of Ibrahim as Khalil. Khullah in Arabic means very deep love. Khalil, you know, it's much. Higher than Rafiq. Rafiq is a, you know, you may call Rafiq a colleague or a comrade. These things are, you know, at the level of Rafiq. But you know, Khalil, and let me quote here one saying of the Prophet that can give you a sub something, you know, what, what Khalil is in Arabic. The Prophet said, Law kuntu muttakhidan khalilan, lattakhastu aba bakrin khalila. If I could take anybody as Khalil for me, I would have taken Abu Bakr. Even Abu Bakr didn't reach that level. لَوْ كُنْتُ مُتَّخِذًا خَلِيلًا لَتَّخَصْتُ أَبَا بَكْرٍ خَلِيلًا So Khalil is a very high level. وَتَّخَلَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا He is Abu Lambiya. The forefather of hundreds of prophets. All the prophets of the Old Testament. Who are they? The progeny of Ibrahim through Ishaq. And then the final and complete messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Rasulul Kamil. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again a son of Ibrahim through Ismail. Inni jailuka linnase imama. That was one dimension. Inni jailuka linnase imama. And here, what takhad Allah Ibrahim a khalila. In relation to the humanity, you are imam. In relation to me, you are my khalil. And in relation to the messengers of Allah and prophets, you are the father of so many prophets and messengers of Allah. That is the position of Ibrahim. That is why, you know, we invoke in Darood, in Salah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahima wa ala ala Ibrahima innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahima wa ala ala Ibrahima innaka hamidun majid. Walillahi ma fi samawat wa ma fi l-ard. And to Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and that is in the earth. Wa kana Allahu bi kulli shayin muhita. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encompassing all the things. He, is, he has encircled as if everything, nothing is beyond his control. Now, the second part of this address to Muslims. The first part was basic Iman and Shirk and amal -e saleh all these things which were very basic. These actually are the subjects which are discussed in detail in the Makki Surahs. Here a brief, you may say, survey. But now again to the Muslims, regarding the reformation of the society, the rules of conduct now in the society. 
in the very first section of this surah there were some commandments about women about orphans but there or arose into the minds of the people certain questions and doubts about those things and allah subhanahu wa taala is now explaining people came to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to ask questions about it. what does it mean how can we do it now these questions yes taftuna fi nisa o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they want a pronouncement about women qul allah yuftikum fihin tell them allah is going to pronounce give you a pronouncement regarding women wa ma yutla alaykum fil kitab fi yatam an nisa and what has been already which is recited to you in the book about the orphan women yatam an nisa in ayah number 3 of this very surah you know the mention was there but people i told you the munkirin sunnah who don't take sunnah to be the exegesis of quran to be the authentic or exegesis of quran they interpret it in different way but here allah subhanahu wa taala has blocked their way he has made his commandment absolutely clear that is the yataman nisa the orphan girls allati la tutunahunna ma kutiba lahunna wa targabuna an tankihuhunna you want to marry them they are under your guardianship you want to marry them because they are orphans you will not have to pay the dowry and nobody will be there to ask for their rights la tutunahunna ma kataba allah lahunna you don't want to pay to them what allah subhanahu wa taala has fixed for them wa targabuna an tankihuhunna and you want to marry them wal mustadafina min al wildan and you know the oppressed people among the oppressed ones among the children wan taqumu lil yatama bil qist and that you should establish justice about orphans now it is qama bi an taqimu lil yatama bil qist iqama bi bil qist with justice so you have to establish justice وما تفعلوا من خير فإن الله كان به عليما and whatever good you do Allah subhanahu wa taala very well knows it don't think it will go in vain or in waste now second issue wa in imratun khafat min baliha nushudan in the beginning of the surah we discussed if a husband feels that the wife is becoming disobedient she is not behaving as she should then what to do that was given in the beginning now the converse of it maybe that a woman thinks that the husband is cruel to him he is not paying his her due her due attention for example after all she is in wedlock with the person she is the wife he is the husband she has some rights over her, over him and he is not performing the duties وَإِنِ امْرَأَةٌ خَافَتْ مِنْ بَعْلِهَا نُشُوزًا أو عِرَازًا If a woman fears from her husband نُشُوزًا that is oppression or cruelty أو إِرَازًا or neglect, ignoring now he is ignoring her not coming to her, not meeting her so these things you know what should you do? فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِمَا أَنْ يُسْلِحَا بَيْنَهُمَا سُلْحَا there will be no blame on them if they fix some new terms between them the woman can say okay i let you have part of the dowry that you paid to me okay but live with me in a in a maruf way in a just justifiable way so actually anything a new treaty can be made they can adjust the things between them so that they can live together and they can live as real wife and husbands because that is the essence of the family life was sulh khair and you know peace and treaty this is much better even if you have to give up something wa uzrat al anfus wa shuh verily these inner souls of man the basic and the baser selves in man there is you know greed in it woman will also say i don't want to forego the part of the dowry that you paid to me but to make some some reconciliation to make things better if you can do it you must do it wa in tuhsinu wa tattaqu 
But if you, if you adopt a good attitude and you have the regard of Allah, taqwa of Allah, you are God conscious, you are Allah conscious, you have Allah in your mind, that taqwa, and you are trying to save yourself from Allah's displeasure. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرًا So whatever you are doing, Allah is very well affair of it. وَلَمْ تَسْتَطِعُوا Third, because it was said in the beginning, if you want to have more than one wise, you have to be, to do full justice between them. All the things that can be measured or weighed must be given equally. Your time equal. The time you are passing with this wife must be equal to the time you are passing with that wife. The money that you are giving to this wife, the equal sum must be paid to the other wife. The dress, what type of dress you are providing to them, you have to provide here also. All the things that can be weighed and measured. But you know, there is one thing which is not in the control of man. And that is his heart. He might have love for one more than the other. And this is beyond the control of human beings. So that is now made clear here. And it is impossible for you in this respect to do justice to the women. Although you might be eager to do that, but you can't do it. But don't incline towards one absolutely. So as to leave the other one as suspended in between. She is neither married. Nor, you know, without, nor with a husband or neither without a husband. This is muallaq, hanging in between. Don't leave her in suspense. You have gone to one side only and the other wife is now muallaq. Wal tadaruha kal muallaqa. Wa in tuslihu wa tattaku fa inna allaha kaana ghafoorun rahima. And if you make amendments, make, amend your ways. And number two, if you have real taqwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever forgiving and ever merciful. Number four. You know talaq, separation. Abghazul halal. There's a hadith the Prophet said. In abghazul halal in the lahi talaq. The worst among the halal things. The most hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is halal. Although it is halal, it is very hateful in the eyes of Allah. Abghazul halal in the lahi talaq. But if a wife and a husband, they are not living properly. They have tried all the means to reconcile to each other. But you know, they have absolutely different temperaments, different priorities. So they can't, they are incompatible, so to say, with each other. So now it's no use keeping them together. The, the house, you know, the family will not have the peace. Which is required. That love. Which is required. So actually then it is better to separate. This ayah is encouraging separation and divorce. Please note it. And this is the balance in divine law. Something is very bad. Very bad. Very bad. But permissible. And in certain condition it becomes desirable. You must try your best. To maintain this relationship of marriage. But if you know. After all the matters that you have tried of reconciliation, you have failed. Then it's better to separate. And if they separate, Allah will provide each one from his abundance. Now, maybe that Allah gives this woman a better husband with whom he can, she can live in a better way. And Allah will provide to this male also, to this, to this husband also a better wife. Which is more compatible in her manners and ways with this, with this person. So that's it. In yatafarraqa, if they decide to separate, yugni allahu kullam min saatihi wa kaan allahu wasi'an hakeema. And Allah is all accommodating. Allah's treasures, they are not limited. He can produce a better wife for you, provide a better wife for you and a better husband for her. Khan Allah wasyan alima and hakima and he is all wise. Walillahi maafis samawati wa maafil lawt. Again, 
یو مسٹ نو ایوری تھنگ بلانگس ٹو ہم ناٹ ٹو یو ناٹ ٹو اینی بڈی ایلس ٹو اللہ بلانگس ایوری تھنگ آل دی تھنگ ریچ آر ان دی ہیونس اور ان دی ارتھ وسین الزین اوت الکتاب ان قبل کم اینڈ وی ہیڈ ایڈوائز اینڈ ایڈمانش دوز آلسو ہو ور گیون دی بک بفور یو او مسلم اینڈ وی آر ایڈوائزنگ یو آلسو You know, all these rules and regulations and do's and don'ts will go in vain if there is no taqwa. Man, man will play with the rules. This happens. Law, you know, can be made an article of play, a game. But if you have real taqwa, then these instructions will be beneficial. See the wordings. وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَقَدْ وَسَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ We advised them also and we are advising you also. They were the former Muslim Ummah and now you are the Muslim Ummah. They were the representatives of Allah on earth and now you are occupying the same position. So we admonish them also and we are admonishing you also. أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَإِن تَكْفُرُوا فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Now here kufr doesn't mean unbelieving. Here kufr is as opposed to shukr. If you act thanklessly, we have given you this position. If you are not grateful or if you disregard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ What harm can you do to Allah by disregarding Him or disregarding His laws and of Sharia? To him belongs all the things which are in the heavens and in the, in the earth. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَنِيًّا حَمِيدًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-sufficient. He needs none, he needs nothing. وَحَمِيدًا Hamida, he is praiseworthy. He doesn't need any praise, he is the praised one himself. وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي اللَّهِ You are seeing how many times these words have been repeated here. لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي اللَّهِ Don't think that you own something and you have the authority. And if a woman is there in the, in the, you know, this wedlock with you, now you can do anything to her that you like. No. You are also bound man to Allah. You will be held responsible on the day of judgment. If there is any ill treatment from your side to your wives, to the orphans or to the weaker elements of the society, don't think you will go scot-free. You will have to You know, face the grand accountability of the day of judgment. وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا إِنْ يَشَاءَ يُزْهِبْكُمْ أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ If Allah pleases, He can finish you, O mankind. وَيَعْتِ بِآخَرِينَ He can bring another creation. He created you. He can create any other uh, 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 creation. Don't think that the creative activity of Allah has come to an end. Now he cannot create any other creature. Although he has raised you to a very high pinnacle, very high position. أَشْرَفُ الْمَخْلُوقَاتِ وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَعْرِ وَرَضَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّ اللَّهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَسِرِمْ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا But don't think we can finish with you, all of you, and we can bring another creation. وَإِنْ يَشَاءَ يُذْهِبُكَ أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ وَيَأْتِ بِآخَرِينَ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ ذَلِكَ قَدِيرًا Allah is verily, Allah is powerful enough to do it. مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ سَوَابَ الدُّنْيَا فَعِنْدَ اللَّهِ سَوَابُ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Very beautiful. Whosoever has decided only to get the reward in this world, Woe to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has both the things, the reward of this world also and akhirah also. Tu hi nada chand kaliyon par kanaat kar gaya, varna gulshan mein ilaje tangiye dama bhi tha. You have limited yourself to this world, the gains of this world, the comforts of this world, the luxuries of this world, the fame of this world, the power of this world, and there is nothing as compared to akhirah. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ 
So it's a very beautiful way of exhortation. Why have you confined yourself? Man kana yuridu sawab ad dunya fa in the Allah sawab ad dunya wal akhirah. Wa kana Allah samiyam basira. And verily, Allah subhanahu wa taala is ever listening, ever seeing. Nothing is hidden from his eyes. Now the last ayah is very profound. Here you know this section is ending. The address to the Muslims. Again we shall find the address to us Munafiqoon from ayah number 136. But this ayah is most profound. This discourse addressed to the Muslims ending with this ayah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu koonu qawwameena bil qist shuhada lillah. Oh, you who profess to believe. Oh, you who believe. Stand up for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qawwamina bil qist. Qama be, I said, to establish something. Qawwamina bil qist. Establishing justice in this world. Just social order to be established. All types of injustice and cruelty and exploitation to be done away with. And this is your duty. We have made you the best ummah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Koonu qawwameena bil qist shuhada lillah. You should become witnesses for, for Allah. You know Jehovah's witnesses. A very good term. Jehovah. This is the name for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Witnesses of Allah. And actually we are the witnesses for Allah. Shuhada lillnaas. Wa kazalika ja'alnaakum ummatan wasatal. لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاء عَلَى النَّاسِ وَتَكُونُوا يَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا So be witnesses for Allah. Now witness you know. Very beautiful. Please understand. Whenever you are testifying in any case, in any dispute, your testimony is going against one party in favor of the other party. Or against this party, then naturality is in favor of the other, against the other. So we have with witness either Lam or Allah. Shahida Lahu. He testified in his favor. Shahida Alayhi. He testified against him. Shahida Lahu or Shahida Alayhi. Just as we have in a hadith, Al Quran Hujjatun Laka or Alayka. This Quran is an argument either in your favor or against you. Either it will intercede before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, this born man of yours loved me much. He read me. He pondered over me. He acted upon me. So accept my intercession for him. It is for you. And it can be against also. Oh Allah, this fellow, he professed that I am the book of Allah. He never read me. Or recited me without understanding. Even a newspaper he was not reading without understanding. But he was reciting me without understanding. So it will be a witness against you. Al Quran Hujjatun Laka Walek. But we shall continue this discourse in the next session, inshallah. Aqulu Kali Hada, Mastakfurullah, Liva Lakum, Walisairil Muslimina, Walmuslimat.